All right. Um, it's a pleasure for me to uh, introduce to you the speakers of uh, the next session. Uh, and that session is about process mining in healthcare. So um, give a warm welcome to uh, the Niels Squared, or the two Niels, uh, that are going to talk uh, about uh, that. So um, please go ahead. <laughs> Thank you very much, Felix. So, warm welcome also from our side to the session on process mining in healthcare. While in the prior session, the past days, you already had a lot of introduction on very specific process mining topics. The idea of this session is to focus on specific application domain, which is becoming increasingly important in the process mining field, which is the healthcare application domain. But before going into the content, let us first briefly introduce ourselves. So, I'm Niels Martin. I'm uh, an assistant professor at Hasselt University in Belgium. For those who don't know where Hasselt is situated, it's a very nice city in the eastern part of Belgium, only a 45 minute drive from here, so very close to Aachen. In this research group, I'm, uh, the research group Business Informatics I'm affiliated to, which is situated within the Faculty of Business Economics. And in that research group, we have basically four fundamental research clusters on which we focus. And two of these clusters, start from problems experienced by a particular application domain. And one of them is audit, for which my colleague Mick Jans will entertain you tomorrow very early in the morning, the morning session. And the other application field is uh, healthcare. And that's the research cluster that I'm re uh, leading. It's a research cluster called process analytics in healthcare, where you focus on different topics related to process mining in healthcare. And I'm very happy that I'm not standing here alone today. So Niels, can you please introduce yourself? Now? Much better. Um, I think uh, you took a lot of efforts just to get two uh, speakers uh, on stage with the same first name, so happy to be the second one. And uh, as Felix just told you, we're the only one standing in between of uh, the dinner, rece the reception dinner, and you at the moment, so we will try to keep in time. And uh, as many of you may know, Felix, uh, actually means the lucky one, and we are quite lucky that we may represent uh, the domain of healthcare and process mining here on stage. And also, if you have read our little comments of what we're going to talk about, we said that it's a quite promising domain, um, process mining and healthcare. And besides being a very pro promising domain, it's a very emotional one, and uh, besides all the challenges that we are facing when it comes to personal health, you actually feel that there's a lot of uh, help that can be done in healthcare with great processes. And at this point, we want to send our best wishes to Will for a fast and full recovery. Um, myself, I'm working at KMS. Um, we are uh, data, data analytics and a business intelligence company based in the south of Germany. And um, I'm liable for the uh, product management and product innovation department and sales. And before that, I worked in a hospital for about six years. And um, yeah, I think I will be able and I'm looking forward to represent the practical side of process mining in healthcare. And now we will start with the more research-related part of the speech. Okay, so even though the two of us are standing here today, important to note that uh, in the book chapter that you can find on Prosman Health, there's also a third name there, Jorge Munoz Gama. He also contributed uh, a lot to the, the book chapter, so even though he's not here, not here today, we would like to acknowledge his contribution to the chapter and to the field uh, as well. So what is the program for today? What is the brief overview of our session? So first, I'm going to start with shaping the context a bit, the healthcare context, what are healthcare processes, and why is post mining healthcare especially challenging? Then I will provide a brief overview of some typical use cases of post mining and healthcare in literature, after which I pass the floor to Niels, who will give you a deep dive into a real life case study of process mining in healthcare at a German hospital. And to end the presentation, we will focus on some open challenges in the field, because we're not there yet. There are still definitely some challenges from both the practitioner side, but also from the academic uh, perspective. 
So let's get started. Let's go into the content and let's start with saying, okay, what is the context on which we are focusing here? What is the healthcare context? So probably when many of you think about healthcare, you immediately think about the care that is provided to patients within the context of a hospital. Of course, it's important to note that while hospital care is very important, that this is only one type of healthcare organization. You also have psychiatric care organizations, you have elderly care facilities, home health care organizations where uh, care is provided at uh, the patient's home. So there are a lot of different um, healthcare organizations and within these organizations there are a bunch of uh, healthcare processes which are being conducted. And a basic distinction which is introduced by Lenz and Reichert is a distinction between two big categories of processes. On the one hand, medical treatment processes and on the other hand, organizational processes. So medical treatment processes, also known as clinical processes, they focus on the processes which are directly related to the uh, patient care. So directly related to diagnosing patients' condition, uh, treatment of patients, those are healthcare medical treatment processes. For example, the treatment process of a patient that is suffering from cancer, that's a medical treatment process. The organizational processes are all the kind of processes that support these medical treatment processes. It can, for example, be the logistical processes, like uh, also uh, the transportation of patients, transportation of goods. Also other uh, processes such as uh, the procurement processes and so on. All these processes, they support these medical treatment processes. And in general, Healthcare processes are said to be complex. And why are they complex? Because many of these processes, and especially the medical treatment processes, are called loosely framed and knowledge intensive. What do these concepts mean? Loosely framed means that healthcare processes can typically be executed in a big diversity of different ways. For example, when you have a treatment process for a certain illness, it might be that the way that the process is executed depends on the condition of the patient. Maybe the patient suffers from some other conditions which need to be taken into account if we want to build the ideal treatment pathway for a patient. On the other hand, they're also knowledge intensive. And what does that mean? That means that the way in which processes are executed largely depends on the knowledge intensive decisions that highly trained healthcare professionals make, like medical doctors, nurses, their decisions typically determine how a process is being performed in healthcare. So now you might think, okay, there are also processes in many other sectors, they're also complex. So you might wonder what makes healthcare specific? What makes healthcare an especially challenging application domain for process mining? And you're lucky, because myself and some colleagues asked ourselves the same question a few years ago. What makes healthcare different? And after several years of reflection and debates, we ended up with a list of 10 characteristics that makes healthcare and healthcare process data an especially tricky and challenging application domain for process mining. And I'm not going over all 10 of them, but I selected five to just give you a feel of what these type of characteristics could be. This paper is, by the way, recently uh, published, and it's a, really a community effort. You see a lot of authors, a lot of people contributed to this paper. So, and in this paper, one of the core aspects is what are the typical characteristics of process mining in healthcare and process data in healthcare. The first thing that is um, really particular for healthcare is that these processes typically exhibit significant variability. When you would put a typical event log from a healthcare context into a classical process mining tool, you would end up with these kind of spaghetti models. Why? Because one thing I already told you, these uh, patient trajectories typically need to be customized to the needs of a particular patient, so they're highly individualized. And secondly, what you also commonly see in healthcare is that within a process there are an enormous number of different activities. Why? Because there are typically many different checks that can be done, many different treatments that can be provided. So you have a lot of activities which can be um, executed in various orders, which leads to this kind of beautiful uh, process models. So this is an example of an event log for 2,765 patients, where 619 different activities in that hospital process were uh, conducted by 266 different physicians or nurses. So this is something what is typically seen in a healthcare setting. Secondly, a second uh, distinguishing characteristics of the healthcare context is that you should value the infrequent behavior. 
So what is commonly done in, in process mining? Process mining typically wants to focus on what is the main behavior of a process. What is the typical behavior that we can see? And what is often done is that in frequent behavior, some execution traces that do not uh, happen very frequently, they're often filtered out in the pre-processing stage to just get a good view of what the main behavior is. But in the process mining in healthcare setting, this infrequent behavior can be very valuable and very interesting because it could be that a certain treatment path is for a certain type of patients very promising in the sense that it might lead to less complications or that it might lead to the same clinical outcomes, but maybe with less costs and in a quicker way that these good clinical outcomes are reached. So in a healthcare setting, it's also important not only to look at the mainstream behavior, but also looking at that infrequent behavior can be very interesting uh, perspective. Thirdly, and that uh, should not come as a surprise as well, in a healthcare process, typically a multidisciplinary team is always involved, where it means that there are a lot of different medical doctors from different specializations can be involved in such a process, nurses can be involved in such a process. You always work with a multidisciplinary team, and it's important when doing process mining in healthcare that this team is um, involved during the entire trajectory of the project, ranging from the very start, where you want to, to shape the problem, shape the research question, until the very end uh, where the uh, interpretation is given to the uh, outcomes. And domain expertise, because these processes are so knowledge intensive, domain expertise is really indispensable. So you need to form a multidisciplinary team, which is always challenging because you need to make sure that you use the correct terminology, that you use the correct medical terms. And I can also speak from my own experience, that's not always uh, as easy uh, as it sounds. The fourth one, it's important to focus on the patients. In the end, when we're talking about healthcare, the patient will be at the center of each healthcare process, directly or indirectly. And when we want to focus on the patient in a healthcare setting, this has implications. Because if we want to gain insight in the patient trajectory, in the uh, patient pot, meaning that we want to follow that patient from the start when a certain diagnosis is made until the end when the um, and the full uh, treatment has been conducted, it's important to take into account that often that uh, patient will not only visit the hospital, but will also visit a general practitioner, might need a physiotherapist. So in that treatment trajectory, there can be different health organizations being involved. And as you probably have already seen said over the course of this week, creating an event log from the systems of one organization is already tricky. Imagine that you need to involve many different organizations, integrate all that data to gain a good insight in the entire trajectory of a patient and not only the hospital part of that trajectory. And a final um, distinction characteristic I would like to share with you is uh, the fact that the healthcare domain is a very rapidly evolving uh, domain. So um, medical knowledge proceeds and improves radically and very rapidly, and hence also healthcare processes also evolve rapidly. An uh, example that everybody will uh, understand is, for example, the treatment trajectory of COVID-19. If uh, you look in the spring of 2020, in these first months, because more and more medical evidence was collected on the virus, also that treatment process significantly changed. If these processes change, if you want to do useful process mining in a healthcare setting, you should be able to cope with these drastic changes in the processes over time, which rapidly change based on increased medical knowledge, but also because, for example, new technology is available. These days you have all these kinds of apps where you can monitor some of your vital signs. It can be that these are also integrated within a healthcare process, which also has implications on how that process uh, flows. So these are some examples of characteristics that make healthcare processes different. I'm not claiming here that none of them are relevant for any other sectors. No, some of them will be relevant for other sectors. But what we do claim is that the combination, combined presence of all these factors make process mining in healthcare quite a challenging effort to, to work with. So now we know what um, process mining in healthcare is, what healthcare processes are, and what these typical uh, characteristics are. Now we can move on uh, to the use cases of process mining in literature. So um, over the past years, more and more research dedicated on process mining in healthcare has been conducted. 
This graph is a result of a systematic literature review that was uh, recently conducted by Emmeline, who was the lead author there. Um, and as you can see in this graph, since 2013, there's a real a gradual increase in the number of publications on process mining in healthcare, showing that the research interest in this application domain is gradually increasing. Of course, I'm aware that also the process mining field as a whole also increased immensely in this uh, time period, but of course this does not invalidate the claim that also more attention is uh, being devoted to healthcare applications. And I would love to discuss all these papers with you, but unfortunately they will be here until tomorrow morning, I'm afraid. So what I try to do is to just give you a broad overview of what the typical use cases of process mining in healthcare are, and to structure that discussion a bit, um, I used the six types of process mining that were introduced to you in the very first uh, session of uh, the summer school. And these are these six, and for each one of them, I'm going to give you an intuitive feel and one example of how research in uh, the healthcare domain can look like. Firstly, we start with uh, process discovery, and especially control flow discovery, that's still a very um, prominent uh, present uh, use case in the healthcare field as well, where we aim to gain insight in the, f the order of activities within a particular healthcare process. And a very simple to understand uh, example of such a use case is uh, this one. It's a paper uh, that is back to 2014 already, where the focus is on the process, uh, on process at the gynecologic oncology department, where patients are treated for severe conditions such as ovarian cancer, for example. And in this specific study, the focus is on a set of patients that receive radiotherapy for their treatment. And what has been done, they have created a, an event log and used a control flow discovery algorithm to obtain the um, control flow model shown on the right of the uh, slide. We're not going into detail on each of the steps, but what you can clearly see is that some uh, phases can be distinguished in the treatment process. Firstly, there are some uh, medical consultations, so the patient goes through various uh, consultations. That's the first phase. Then the second phase, there are some preparatory activities where, for example, it's um, determined how the patient should be positioned under the radiation machine. Also, the location of some uh, critical organs is identified because, of course, this should be avoided during radiation. So there are some preparatory activities. And then the actual radiation therapy follows. So using these kinds of flowcharts representations is a very strong um, tool to um, go into debate with domain experts to let them see, okay, this is how the process is being performed now. Um, what are maybe strange connections, connections that you did not expect? Um, are there certain treatment paths that you didn't expect? Why are some activities repeated multiple times? This is really a starting point to enter into a debate with the clinical expert to see where potential is for uh, process improvement. So this diagram, it's quite straightforward, quite easy to read, but of course, remember what I just mentioned, that's not always the case. So um, when you apply automated control for discovery, you often get these kind of uh, spaghetti models in a healthcare setting. And a lot of research has also been done in general process mining field on how to handle this, even though it remains a challenging um, task to uh, obtain an understandable uh, control flow model. For example, work has been done on trace clustering, where groups of similar, in this case, patients would be created and you discover a, a process model for each cluster instead of one process model for the entire um, cohort of patients. But what is also in the healthcare setting a very promising uh, technique for control flow discovery is, I think, is uh, interactive control flow discovery. And in interactive control flow discovery, um, a domain expert is actively involved during the discovery process. It's not just the algorithm that works, no, the algorithm really works together with the domain expert that could, for example, be a clinical expert. And uh, through the interaction of the domain expertise on the one hand and the data on the other hand, I strongly believe that that's a very promising uh, route ahead to make sure that you get understandable and readable process models in healthcare, which are then indeed the basis to enter into debate with um, healthcare professionals. The second uh, use case on which we were already extensively introduced over the past uh, days is uh, conformance checking. So where we want to gain insight in, okay, is a certain process followed as we would like it uh, to happen? And to give one specific example, it's by accident an example that also Felix uh, worked on. 
Uh, one example of conformance checking in healthcare, which is uh, good, easy to comprehend, is situated within the emergency department of a hospital, where there's a data set of 1,050 patients with uh, sepsis symptoms. So for those who don't know sepsis, it's a very severe medical condition that really uh, requires immediate uh, action. And what is good in the healthcare setting in general is that there are quite a lot of guidelines, rules are available. And that's sometimes very different from other domains where these kind of normative models, rules, guidelines are typically not present. So that's an advantage when applying conformance checking. You have some guidelines that uh, show how the process should be executed in the ideal way. And this information you can use and put next to the data to see whether your process execution really corresponds with how it should have been executed. And also for sepsis, there were some guidelines at the time of writing. There was one example of such a, a medical guideline was that there was a certain time interval that needed to be respected. In particular, in this example, you had a time interval from ER sepsis triage, which means uh, the moment at which a patient arrives at the emergency department and his or her condition is uh, assessed, then a triage document is filled in, and from that moment onwards when there is a suspicion for sepsis, until the moment that the patient receives uh, the antibiotics, there should be at most one hour, because otherwise it uh, wouldn't be as effective anymore. So this was a rule that was available, and in this application the data was used to assess whether this um, um, rule, this guideline was adhered to. And from the analysis, it appeared that on average it took 1.7 hours in this patient group to make sure that the um, um, antibiotics were admitted, so that it took too long, and that for over half of the patients that rule was not followed at the moment. So also here, just to illustrate how conformance checking can be valuable within a healthcare context. Next up is uh, performance analysis, and in performance analysis, the goal is to measure the performance of a particular healthcare process. And if we want to measure performance, we need key performance indicators, the measures that we will use to quantify um, the performance of a process. Within the healthcare context, there are three large categories of KPIs that are used. First one are the clinical KPIs. This really relates to the medical condition of a patient. It could be for example, the number of complications after a certain surgery, that could be an example of a clinical KPI. Financial KPIs, financial KPIs focus on the financial consequences of the execution of the process, could be, for example, the costs that are incurred to um, perform a process. And finally, operational KPIs, which relate to the operational execution of the process. And this last category can be further subdivided into subcategories. You have the time-related KPIs, for example, the waiting time, of a patient or the length of stay is commonly used. Length of stay, that's the time that elapses between the moment that, for example, a patient arrives at the emergency department and the moment that he or she leaves the emergency department. That's also a common time-related KPI. And you can also have uh, resource-related KPIs, which can, for example, be the um, bed occupancy rates, how many beds are being taken, or also the staff utilization rate, which is also a resource-related KPI. So these are potential KPIs, and also in the systematic literature review from which I showed the graph earlier, we also had a look at how many of these papers use a particular type of KPI. And the results were quite surprising, in the sense that over half of the papers, 56% uh, of the papers, they don't consider or report a specific KPI when they uh, are performing process mining in healthcare which is quite a lot because, of course, the KPIs, they determine the focus of your analysis, and yet in more than half of the papers that we reviewed, no um, specific KPIs were mentioned. That was the first surprising observation. When KPIs are mentioned, the most frequently occurring KPI, and that was expected, was uh, a time-related KPI. For 38.8% of the papers used a time-related KPI. 90% use the clinical uh, KPIs related to the medical condition of patients, and the other categories, the financial KPIs and the resource-related KPIs, they did not occur that uh, frequently. So to give one specific example very briefly of how performance analysis in a healthcare setting could look like, setting is an emergency department in Australia where they had an event log of uh, 1,473 cases, in this case, visits to the emergency department, 
And the question was, we want to analyze the length of stay of these patients and gain insights in where, for example, the process can be improved in order to ensure that the length of stay is uh, reduced. And one of the observations in this study is that there was one big contributor to long length of stay for patients, and that's the time between the admission decision and the actual admission. So what does this mean? A certain point in time, you're at the emergency department, at a certain point in time, it could be that the doctor states, okay, this patient will not be able to go home. This patient should be admitted to one of the hospital wards. So that's the admission decision, the decision that the doctor makes. But then time can elapse until that patient actually physically moves away from the emergency department. It could be that at the moment of the decision, there was no bed available at the ward. That could be an option. Or it could be that there is a bed available, but for example, the room still needs to be cleaned. So that time period between the moment that the decision is made that the patient has to be admitted and the actual uh, admission is a very high contributor to a high length of stay. And this is problematic because, of course, as long as that patient still is on the emergency department, he or she needs to be taken care of and occupies resource on the emergency department, which can have an effect on their ability to take up new patients and provide the optimal care. So this is just one illustration of how process mining can be used to um, analyze the performance of uh, processes in healthcare. Fourth uh, big category is uh, comparative uh, process mining. What's in the name? Comparative process mining focuses on using process mining to make comparisons. And when you look at the literature in that uh, field, which is, I have to admit, far more limited than, for example, the process discovery uh, domain, which still remains a very, um, represents a very big bulk of the research done on process mining in healthcare. But if we analyze the papers in that uh, use case category, we basically see three different uh, categories. Firstly, you can use process mining to compare different patient groups. It could, for example, be that uh, you have a patient group with certain characteristics. For example, one application is that there are three different uh, type of medications that can be provided to a patient with a certain illness. And the analysis is conducted, okay, how is the impact of using a certain medication on the treatment trajectory of that uh, patient? So that's a first use case. Secondly, you can also compare time periods. Um, there's one paper that focuses on uh, comparing the process of patients at the emergency department during summer with during winter to see whether there are differences. Another example application is that the hospital is moving to a new building and that they want to check, okay, how does the process change in the new building compared to how it has performed in the old building. That's also two time periods which are compared. And finally, you can also compare healthcare organizations because often pro similar processes are being executed in uh, different hospitals can, for example, be the treatment of a certain disease, is executed in hospital one and hospital two. It can be very interesting to use process mining to compare these processes so that hospitals can learn from each other. And of this last category, one, I think the most famous example is the work from Partington et al. Um, and what they have done, they have focused on uh, comparing the process of uh, patients admitted to the ED in four different Australian hospitals, and they focus on a particular group of patients suffering from acute coronary uh, syndrome, which is a heart disease. The details don't matter that much. So what they did is they went for the data for four different hospitals, and they learned a process model for each of them, and then compared these uh, process models. So I'm not going into details of these, each of these process models, but what were the kind of conclusions that they drew from this analysis is that there were significant differences in how frequent some connections between activities were uh, between the different hospitals. Also, that there was quite some difference in the type of examinations which were conducted, even though it was exactly the same patient group with exactly the same uh, conditions, still very different treatments, uh, examinations, sorry, were conducted. So that was an interesting observation. And also they saw that the length of stay significantly deferred across these hospitals. But these were very remarkable findings, which really instigated the debate between these hospitals to see where are the changes and where can we learn from each other. So while this is very promising, it's also not the easiest use case. Why? Because this implies that there's openness and transparency among these hospitals. They should be willing to share how they execute things and also the things that they're good at, but also things that they might be not so good at, not, might be underperforming. And 
I really noticed that in practice, that's sometimes difficult uh, to be very evident, that openness, that attitude to transparency, to allow a cross-organizational uh, comparison, even though I strongly believe that process management can be a valuable uh, tool for that. Predictive process mining, so while the four previous categories were all more backward looking, like using historical data to understand the past better, to hopefully make decisions to improve the future, predictive process mining is really forward looking, it wants to make predictions about the future based on the data that we have available. And within this um, application field, you have the traditional um, Prediction models, for example, a paper has been published where they try to predict the waiting time of patients at the emergency department based on uh, a lot of uh, features that are extracted. Another type of applications in this uh, area are uh, process uh, simulation applications. So this means that you develop a simulation model of a certain process in order to make predictions uh, about the future. And one example of that uh, process uh, simulation application field is a recent paper that has been submitted and that is situated within the context of a radiology department of a hospital. So that radiology department is going to construct new facilities and the management of the hospital needs to make decisions and provide input to the architects, like how many um, radiological devices do I need in my new building? For example, how many um, RX scanners, how many CT scanners do I need in my new building? So that's all input that they needed to provide. They need to provide how large the waiting room should be, and all these kinds of uh, information needs to be provided to the architect, and this uh, radiology department wants to have a data-driven uh, answer to that. So what we have done here is we developed a simulation model, and the simulation model is a bit like a digital twin of the, the radiology department, heavily relying on event log data to build this uh, simulation model, and this model has been used to run uh, several scenarios and to make predictions about, okay, what would happen if this, uh, this situation would happen in practice. So this is also one type of predictive process monitoring in healthcare. And then the last category, action-oriented process mining, and that really links to the talk that we just had before uh, the break, is indeed analyses are valuable, but of course, analysis results in itself will not improve healthcare processes. It's only when these results are picked up and translated to actions that uh, process mining can really contribute to uh, the improvement of healthcare processes. And this field of action-oriented process mining is more situated within that uh, sphere. But unfortunately, until now, quite limited research has been done on that uh, area within the healthcare domain. So there's plenty of uh, research challenges open uh, there. But the first step to move towards action-oriented uh, process mining, in my opinion, is to make sure that um, process mining tackles questions which come from healthcare professionals. That these questions from healthcare professionals are really the starting point for your process mining uh, project. And this is also not often done in, uh, in practice. We often see more uh, theoretical research which does not start from the real problems experienced by healthcare professionals. So I think that's a first step, entering to dialogue with these healthcare professionals and make sure that these problems they experience are the starting point for process mining analysis. But that's also not trivial. Why? Because typically healthcare professionals, they don't know what process mining is. And hence, they are often have very much difficulties to formulate questions that they want an answer on because they don't know what the potential of process mining is. But it's definitely a, a promising field uh, for the future. So when looking back, so it's not my ambition to give a full overview of all use cases. I just want to highlight the, the broadness of what process mining in healthcare in literature um, is representing. What is important, even though it might be a bit tricky uh, when you just see this slide, it's important to notice that in general, the bulk of uh, research that has been done is still situated on that top row, like especially process discovery, conformance checking, also performance analysis, and definitely there's still a lot of research potential available on these last three uh, categories of um, process mining in healthcare. So now I gave the broad overview. I'm very happy now to pass the floor to Nils, who will take a deep dive into one specific uh, use case of uh, process mining in healthcare. So, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nils. <laughs> Let's start with going one slide back um, from a practitioner's perspective. Um, 
Let's wait a second until we come. Here we are. From a practitioner's perspective, we are definitely working on the top three icons. That works beautiful. <laughs> um, looking at a real life case study, I want to uh, quickly tell you where we actually come from um, with our business because that's actually the basis of what you will see in the next couple of minutes. Um, looking at the uh, standard uh, awareness that we've got when we look at a watch at the moment. Here we've got an Apple uh, watch on screen and we think they can actually uh, identify heart diseases. We told ourselves that um, Excel can't be the standard answer for the future for managing complex healthcare facilities, as Niels has also just shown you in some of the research examples and uh, for this reason um, we said we need something else and uh, started working with process mining uh, four years ago. Um, looking at the uh, system that we have in place in about a quarter of all hospitals in Germany um, and Austria, it's a BI system um, and we've got about 450 standard interfaces that we can connect systems being used in the hospital to our BI system. And this actually allows us to combine a lot of information quickly. And uh, we actually, um, when we thought about working with process mining, we saw the advantage of plugging the process mining technology to our data warehouse to get access to all the data in the hospital, actually. Um, how does this work? Uh, we've got standard interfaces, and we actually uh, pull all information out of the primary systems, store them in our database, and then continue working from there. Um, looking at our bigger customers, we've got about 100 to 130 interfaces running continuously at the same time, pulling all the information out of the hospital information systems. Um, so, for those of you who are familiar with the German healthcare environment, you may know some of those hospitals that all work with our system. And I think with the uh, process mining uh, community being in this room, I don't have to mention anything about the uh, footprint that Celonis has got in the industry. And for the examples that I will show you now, we have actually combined the technology of Celonis and we've got an OEM integration into our data warehouse. So we've used and combined two industry standards. Let's look at the real life case study now, and uh, first of all, um, the question is, and this is a question that we ask ourselves when we actually started working in the field of process analysis, um, why do projects fail in a real life environment? And uh, first of all, um, as Niels has already shown you, the spaghetti images, those processes are highly complex and variable. And secondly, um, in the last years, there have been, there's been a lack of knowledge about the project goals. Do we want to save money? Do we get more efficient? Um, what is the actual goal of um, the project that has been performed in the hospitals? And that was something that we saw definitely that had to be changed. So a lot of communication definitely has to be involved. Um, then there's little automation in many hospitals. A lot of uh, handwritten documentations, which makes it much harder to actually uh, automize process control. It means more workload for staff, so they are not really always happy um, to get another project that the hospital management wants them to perform. Um, we need a lot of consulting. It's definitely a budget question, so those projects are not the cheapest. Um, and they're very different 
expectations if you look at the management side of the hospital, the doctoral, the nursing side, and so these people who work on a day-to-day -day basis with the patients. You've got IT with no specific domain knowledge about process mining, and they have to actually help you in the projects, and uh, last uh, but not least, uh, in general, for the practitioners, the uh, process mining know-how um, is not widely spread. We found one hospital uh, a couple of years ago, like as the icebreaker who wanted to start with the uh, process mining technology, that is the hospital of uh, Braunschweig. They have been using our data warehouse for a couple of years, so we had the advantage of having all the relevant data in the database. And um, as you can see, they have got about 200,000 outpatients per year. And when we started in the project, we actually looked at a five-year period, so we had event logs of one million patients to work with. So the, uh, that was a huge spaghetti diagram at first. Um, they've got about 4,000 um, employees, and they are under the 20 biggest hospitals that we actually have in Germany. Um, when we uh, started the project, and we uh, spoke to the staff and those people involved in the processes, we found that there were num numerous uh, process delays uh, for many fields that actually led to uh, an even higher complexity, and there were frictions, especially between the departments. So every department was organized very well for itself, but uh, looking at the uh, overall process for the patient, there were different departments involved, and that were the points where we had most of the problems. And then we were looking for indicators to identify the processes we wanted to look at with the highest focus. And the aim was actually to uh, get a higher team satisfaction, to get a quality improvement, to get, in the end of the day, a higher productivity for the processes, um, and they wanted to use this to show staff and patient what digital transformation can actually do uh, to help in patient care. Um, as I told you, we looked at one million event logs at the first time when we started the process, and the question was which processes to focus on, and there are actually true three chances that you can use to answer this question. You can use benchmark and see over many hospitals which processes uh, probably work bad from a uh, diagnosis-related view. Hospital management knows the pain, so they can tell you where to look at. Or you can just look at uh, volume drivers, so those diagnoses where they do have actually a lot of patients. And we combined those three, having all the information actually in the system and uh, transformed the list-based views that you see on the left um, to a manageable process view by combining actually those information with the process mining technology. Looking at the uh, process, we have also uh, chosen a cardiologic example, um, and here we actually do have about 2,000 um, 2, patients getting the treatment um, in one year. And yeah, as you see, first of all, um, spaghetti pictures don't help at all to identify relevant changes in the process, and then we, um, as you know, and see here, uh, reduced activities and connections, and then rebuild the process to get to a stage where we can actually identify things that we have to change and look at. And here we are. Um, let me lead you through this, as it's in German, process end and start, you all 
probably no. The actual treatment, why the patient comes into the hospital, is a cardiologic treatment, the coronal angiography. And we are actually uh, looking um, at a time period for the well-running processes from the patient getting into the hospital here with the Aufnahme, uh, and then um, ideally the patient brings all relevant papers and documents with him because he actually has been going to the Vorstationäre Leistungen, um, which are performed before the actual... This works, so this works much better. Um, so the patient brings all relevant data with him before he actually goes into the hospital. Um, this way, they get into the hospital in the morning, and within seven hours, so same day, they get their treatment, and one day later, they may leave the hospital again, ideally. Second chance, they already have their radio, radiologist's uh, papers, so they go to the hospital and they only need their EKG electrocardiogram. This can be done on the same day and then the actual treatment can be done next day. So more or less, this is just an organizational factor that leads to um, a one day longer length of stay for the patient in the hospital. And if the patient actually does not bring both EKG and radiologic information, on the first day, radiology department, second day, EKG, third day, treatment. Just an organizational question that we look at this example. And another very interesting finding for us was that we found this arrow leading directly from Aufnahme to, so getting to the hospital to discharge within one day. So we said, okay, no treatment being found here. There must, must be a mistake in the system, um, especially because all these patients going on this path still have been built to the insurance with full treatment. Hmm. Problem. Checking the data, we found out that those patients definitely all got their treatment, but they never were not actually correct. Uh, they had no correct documentation within the systems. So besides the process discovery and the quality of care, we found a data quality issue that was identified um, in this example. And actually looking at this um, for the first time with the staff, they said, yeah, great idea, but that doesn't really work for a lot of patients. And we said, yes, of course it does. And uh, we have actually looked at the numbers all going along these different passes. And that's, from the practitioner's perspective, one of the most important facts. You don't have to actually tell the hospital to do something they can't do. They have proven it hundreds of times, that they can actually um, do the process on the right path. So actually, this is making it much easier in the discussion of speaking with the people in the hospital to bring more people on the good path or the right path instead of like uh, just discussing what could be done better. They prove it every day that they actually are able to do this and this actually allows um, a great finding and openness um, of this stuff in those examples. And as we found here, we have got um, f about 427 uh, out of those 2,000 patients already being on the good path. And they say, yes, of course, but we've got people coming with emergency care. And they are, of course, they have to get radiologic and EKG treatment. Of course, before we did the analysis, all emergency patients have been filtered out. Um, 
Looking at those examples, we found that just from an organizational perspective, with process mining, a lot of, uh, a lot of um, good changes can be done in the hospital. You don't actually have to go into the very deep medical processes. You can start with the organizational facts. And um, as Niels was uh, showing the spaghetti images, um, with uh, sort of simulations running through the spaghettis, you can still find the circles to find out what to look at. But from our perspective, from the practical side, you have to lower the problem down to a really well understandable graphic like we've seen before. You won't really find any things to change in the big spaghetti image. So, looking at the question how much money can a hospital save to actually invest in the technology, which is at the beginning of the process, the trade-off where they decide whether to do it or not. Um, looking at the average length of stay, which we've got here, for um, a treatment just by 15%, and if you cal calculate about 560 euros just for the hotel cost in the um, in the hospital, and you take a diagnosis-related group um, of 500 patients, um, which is still a relatively low number for a big hospital, um, and they normally have, uh, or before you start the project, they have got an average length of stay of close to six days. Um, this already means that you can actually have a saving of 535 days of hospitalization, which is about the worth of a quarter of a million euros. And this is only one out of uh, 1,000 to 1,500 treatments that they actually perform in a hospital with the size of Braunschweig. Now, if you actually speak with the hospital, they say, yeah, it's good to save money, but we've got it. Actually, we do have a different problem. We do just not get enough stuff. We do not have enough professionals. There's a question in the back. Yes, it is. Yeah. So we go back here. Um, the main improvement is actually to make sure that you don't get any hospitals, uh, any patients into the hospital who do not bring their relevant papers. They all have to be seen by a doctor in primary care in the primary care system of the hospital before they get into the hospital for the, before the treatment. So they can actually um, just save all the waiting time and this is still uh, a huge saving. Most welcome. Good question. So, here we were. Um, of course they want to save money. But more relevant at the moment, they do not have enough staff. They don't have enough nurses, doctors, administrative, administrative staff, service staff and IT specialists to actually serve all the patients who have to be treated especially after the uh, corona delays of many treatments. So now the main focus is on being getting more efficient, but not from a cost-saving perspective, but just to being able to treat all the patients um, with uh, the stuff that they actually still have. And this uh, actually leads to a much more openness that we find in the projects of the staff who's actually involved in the processes because they know we have to get better in the process just to be able to treat the patients. Looking at the open challenges, um, from our perspective, it's highly important um, to take people with you on the journey. You can't just give them a technology that they are not used to and they have not used have not been used to work with something like that in the last 20, 30, or 40 years in their practitioner's life. So communication is a big challenge. Um, 
you have to build trust into the technology. So as Niels has shown, there are six areas um, of uh, research fields and actually to get from the top line to the bottom line, you really have to build trust in the technology before you think of automizing processes. So we are definitely working on process discovery and executing some changes manually on the process. Before you actually start talking about automization, you need to build trust into the technology. Then um, the budget and cost side. We have to think about uh, the costs of process mining technology that we want to bring into healthcare, uh, which is at the moment a relevant showstopper for especially smaller hospitals. And um, yeah, the two last fields, um, jump to the last uh, first, data quality um, is highly important, also uh, or especially before, because without the data quality automation doesn't make any sense. Um, and uh, actually, this one is the biggest showstopper. Qualified stuff. So process-oriented stuff in the hospitals, in the healthcare industry, um, is definitely something um, that you need because uh, we can't do all of the process uh, projects by consulting. You need project drivers um, within the hospital. So we've started uh, actually speaking um, to some universities about build, getting a process uh, mining oriented session in the actual um, doctors and uh, doctors and nurses qualification. But this is definitely at the beginning of the time at the moment. That's the practitioner's perspective on the open challenges, and I think from the academic perspective, there are also some challenges, quite open. Okay, so definitely, I recognize all the challenges that were already mentioned from the practitioner's side, but I also want to add four challenges from the academic side, where I think that we, as a research community, should also step up the pace and make sure that we uh, support uh, healthcare. The first one, that's the topic that I already alluded to, is that it's important that process mining and healthcare research, if we want to make the difference, we should tackle real world healthcare problems. We should tackle the problems that um, healthcare professionals experience. And there's a lot of progress that can be made on our side as a research, because in the systematic literature review that I referred to a couple of times, we know that only in 12.5% of the papers, it is indicated that healthcare professionals were involved at the problem definition state of a process mining project. They're typically involved at the end to interpret the output or to validate the output. But if we really want to make a difference in healthcare, it's important to involve them the entire way. So starting from that problem definition phase already. So I think a lot of progress can still be made there uh, at the research side. Data quality was already pointed out, that's a very important challenge because that's even more challenging than in many other sectors. Why? Because in healthcare, many of the data that we use is the result of a manual intervention of a nurse or a doctor. For example, a nurse putting some input in the patient file and saving it, but it could be that the data is inputted at a very different moment than when the activity is performed because they're very busy with the operational work. It might be that the administrative registration is only done afterwards. And of course, if we use that for process mining, that really messes up things as you probably can imagine. So of course, the gold standard is that we can improve data registration at the source. So that's the ideal scenario. But of course, even without that perfect data registration at the source, I think we as a research community should continue our efforts to focus on, first of all, systematically assessing the quality of data, so that at least we are aware of the problems present in our data before we start analyzing, and also to develop new techniques in order to try to mitigate some of the common data quality problems which are present in healthcare data. Thirdly, move beyond uh, control flow discovery, even though I already mentioned control flow discovery is an important research topic in healthcare and also will remain an important uh, research topic. 
it's also important that we move beyond that and also focus on other aspects like the, the predictive uh, process mining in healthcare, the action-oriented process mining in healthcare. So we have to move beyond only focusing on control for discovery and broaden the field uh, a bit up. And finally, uh, look beyond the hospital walls. Um, I already alluded on that point in the first part of the presentation. If we want to focus on the patient trajectory, then we will need to look beyond the hospital walls because a big part of the process will also be performed outside the hospital with general practitioner, physiotherapist, and so on. So if we want to get a, an integrated view, focus on the patient, then we will need cross-organizational process mining and integrated data from all these different um, players in the healthcare uh, process in order to, make, uh, to generate insights to improve uh, patient trajectories. And even when you want to stick to a single organization, currently a lot of research is done within the hospital context. And I understand it because hospitals are more mature in terms of their systems or their data registration is typically more mature. But also remember that there are a lot of other healthcare organizations that could greatly benefit from process mining, like for example, elderly care facilities. They can also benefit from process mining, so also attention should be devoted on doing process mining in those contexts, even though it will be challenging because they're less mature instead of us. in terms of systems, they might record less data, but that also uh, implies that, okay, we have to look beyond the walls of the hospital also from that angle. I selected four, I see many more uh, challenges, I'm happy to discuss with you uh, offline, but uh, for now I would like to close this uh, session and open the Q&A with one final thought. So healthcare is definitely not the easiest application domain for process mining, but there's great potential in uh, using process mining in healthcare because of its big societal value. And process mining can really be, I think, a pivotal tool in order to better understand healthcare processes in order to identify areas for improvement. And as a researcher, but I think uh, from the practitioner side, it will also hold that there's definitely uh, a long road ahead before uh, process mining will be systematically used within a healthcare setting. There will be many challenges that appear, but I'm really convinced that it's worthwhile to tackle these challenges because using a quote of Dave Martinez, often bumpy roads lead to beautiful places. Thank you. So we now open the floor to questions, suggestions, remarks. So uh, you mentioned in healthcare, like I would assume it's very difficult to get real world data. So because of let's say privacy reasons or, or, or such reasons. Um, so do you think it would be uh, possible to use synthetic data in healthcare and how effective will that be? And if it, if it will be effective, how, how would you go about creating a synthetic data set for healthcare? Yeah, very good uh, question indeed. It's challenging to get healthcare data and I notice working in healthcare for many years that it is becoming increasingly more challenging and I'm completely disregarding the inter-organizational setting because that's completely unexplored terrain. Would it be possible to use synthetic data? Mm, I doubt it. To really, if you want to develop an artifact that really solves healthcare problems, of course, during the development phase, you can use synthetic data. But I don't expect that it will be easy to create synthetic data that would capture the true complexity of real-world healthcare data. So it's a good, like, for your formative evaluation during the development, definitely uh, synthetic data is good in, in any case when you develop an algorithm. But to really prove its, its usefulness, I think it would be very tricky to create healthcare data that really captures that complexity in a real life healthcare setting. Um, just, to, just to add on that, um, I also think it's highly difficult um, to go that path and um, it was quite interesting because we're coming from totally different sides of process mining and while we were work working on the chapter we actually saw like we, we try and have to combine in the future those two views and as I said just for, the, for this one hospital we've got one million event logs um, looking at five years and now trying to combine in a project the research uh, side with a real life 
uh, case that might open up the, the field and uh, might be interesting for an update for the second version of the Process Mining Handbook. Uh, thank you for the very good uh, talk and lesson. Um, I wanted to ask you, could you elaborate a bit more on the, how can you exploit process mining to show the role of resources? And because they are very important in healthcare, right? You have also shown the, I wonder if you plan to use uh, perhaps object-centric process mining to show the relationship between uh, resources and, and patients, for example. And um, also, uh, there is also a quite rich literature in healthcare using for perhaps uh, uh, discrete event simulations to identify bottlenecks and uh, so on. So I wonder also if you, f you can find points in common with that uh, literature. Mm -hmm. Thank you, very good uh, question. I'll chop it up in, in two pieces a bit. Uh, so the first uh, question related to indeed, how can we analyze more the resource perspective? And I couldn't agree more. That's a field that received too little attention. Um, I have a funding application running on that topic. So if uh, the government uh, likes the idea, the idea of that project would be to either look at the uh, healthcare process from the resource perspective. Because currently, the focus is mainly on looking from the patient perspective, which is very valid, of course, but of course that resource perspective is becoming more and more, since COVID, more and more important because of the high work pressure, people even leaving uh, the healthcare profession. So I think that looking at the resource perspective and looking at how can we improve work organization in order that this resource, that it's more, that they can focus more on their core tasks, that we can identify things that should not be in their core task uh, package. I think that's very valuable. So. I hope to see more work on that topic in the coming years, but currently that resource perspective re received quite limited attention in the process mining field as a whole, but definitely also in the healthcare uh, part. Regarding your question on discrete event simulation, I strongly believe in the potential of discrete event simulation. The only downside is that typically the model development process is very cumbersome and takes a lot of time. Um, when referring to the example of that radiology department, I cannot imagine the number of hours that were spent to develop a valid simulation model. Because of course, if your simulation model is not a valid representation of reality, then all your projections for the future are also misleading, it can be really dangerous. So developing such a discrete event simulation model in a healthcare setting, it's very labor intensive. And as a consequence, I only see a real use case when it really deals all about uh, strategic decisions. Like for example, when you're building a new hospital, a strategic decision, it will have an impact for the coming decades. Then it's typically worthwhile to develop such a model. But if you want to make some small operational changes, then you have to be lucky that you can use standard simulation uh, tooling from, for example, in the process mining tool, sometimes a simulation component, which is currently still limited. If that serves, uh, can answer your question, then that's good. But if you really want for full-fledged um, discrete event simulation model construction, it would just take too much effort and time and too big of an investment for very small operational changes that you want to test what would happen if we would add a terminal to do the registration electronically compared to the person is sitting there. I think for such use cases, just the development cycle is too long. So I think there's also a lot of progress that can be made to, to make that simulation model development time window smaller that you can more quickly uh, generate simulation results and use that technique. Um, I'm here. <laughs> so um, thank you for the interesting presentation. My question is to the other Nils actually. Um, so, as it was mentioned, one of the particularities of healthcare processes from the academic perspective is that we should value the infrequent behavior. But in that example that we saw, at least at that part of the example, we still were looking at the most frequent um, pass, I guess. So, I was wondering what is the industry take on this issue and uh, generally to what extent does the industry um, application of um, process mining to healthcare rely on the academic challenges and uh, view on this. Thank you. Yeah, very good question. And actually, um, as you were just pointing out, yes, we were looking on frequent behaviors um, because we found the challenge 
of uh, building trust into the technology. By looking at infrequent uh, behavior, this will be much harder, so we went the other way around. Um, and I still looking at the future um, of applying the technology um, in, a, in a practical healthcare environment. This is necessarily to be done applying, um, com coming from the frequent behavior, building the trust, and then looking at the infrequent behavior. So this is definitely something that uh, from our side is something um, that we have to do in the future, but it's not our main focus at the moment. Yeah, okay. Um, great presentation. Got lots of many questions for you, but I'll stick with two. One for both of the Nielses. First, German Niels. Um, I was uh, wondering who was the target group in the hospital? As you mentioned, the hospitals are very siloed organizations. So specialists have their own domain and they think they're king of the castle and everyone thinks they're king of the castle. Um, so who was interested in the whole patient experience? Uh, main focus, um, as you were pointing out, some strong groups in the hospital uh, having the biggest influence, uh, talking on doctoral art and things like that. Medical staff are the main focus, definitely. Okay, but then it comes to optimizing specialists. Yes. Okay. Interesting. And then for the Belgium Niels, I also had a question uh, that's on the granularity of the data. For instance, when you look at the patients, they go from patient to tube to sample to... So it, it, it divides throughout the whole process. Uh, how do you cope with that in analyzing? That's a challenge. And indeed, what I typically do is I just start from the question that is asked. And for me, that is always guiding for the level of detail that you need. So indeed, you can go to very fine grain data. And that's also one of the other challenges that I did not mention on the slide, but that you can find in the paper, is also how to deal with these multiple layers of detailed data. Because of course, you could also have surgical robots where almost every inch of a movement is uh, recorded. And there, my advice would be, let the question that needs to be answered determine the level of aggregation that you need in uh, the data. So for example, if you would need those tubes and all the specific tests that had been done, then it becomes, of course, more challenging because then also the number of activities in your process model will blow up and then you get the spaghetti problem. So there's no clear-cut answer to that question. It's a valid problem that needs uh, to be tackled, but it really depends on the question that you start from, um, from what the healthcare professionals want to know. And it's, it's very challenging. For example, some of you might know the, the MIMIC database, which is available. Uh, it's a very large database which goes to that very, very fine-grained data as well. And it's really a challenge on how are we going to combine all that data into a single event log. But of course, the event log does not exist. It's we start from a question, and then we have to build up the event log to the function of answering that specific uh, question. But it, it's a challenge, having all this very high-level data, that very fine-grained data. I agree. So there's still a lot of research that needs to be done also in that area as well. And uh, maybe one thing to add, on the, on, the, on the data side, at the moment we look at data that are being stored uh, in uh, systems when they get documented. So we do not actually know where the patient physically is in the process. We just know now there actually has been some action has been, some event has been performed. Um, one of the next steps, which from our side for this perspective is highly important, is to really know where the patient is physically in the process. And at the moment, especially for the hospital in Braunschweig, they started a, a project where all patients actually get an RFID tag. And that will add some more data um, on the spaghetti models. Yeah. Uh, th thanks for the presentation. I want to ask about your change management strategy and plan. For what, what was your change management plan or strategy to implement and adopt the process mining technology within the hospital? And what are the what are the challenges that you faced? Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, uh, change management was an absolutely important fact uh, for for success in the project, as you're pointing out. Um, first of all, um, we've spoken not about economic KPIs and drivers. We actually spoke about getting more uh, quality into um, 
quality and stability in the treatment process. Um, and not looking at the KPIs, but always saying, of course, in the end of the day, we will look at KPIs, but starting with the quali quality perspective of better processes for patient care, that was, I think, the uh, most important part of the change management communication process. Um, in the end of the day, we started showing them, look, we just, we have only looked at organizational and quality aspects, and then in the end of the day, it got cheaper and it got better. But we didn't try to make it cheaper, we just got, we, we wanted to make, we wanted to get a better treatment, and that was the focus. And this was the main, I think also the main uh, change in comparison to other projects that have been practically been performed with process mining technology because they were focusing on actually getting processes cheaper and that lost stuff. Hmm? You hand, do you tackle that part within research on like change management and adoption for the technology? Yeah, I, I don't think in the healthcare there has been systematic research on uh, adoption um, of process mining. There's more work on process mining as a whole, not specific to one sector. Um, but I think also there, one key point to get acceptance is to really start from their problems. And in my opinion, in research, too limited attention is devoted to really understanding the problems in healthcare and then devising solutions to, to help them uh, with. So I think that's also there, is something I think that we currently invest too limited attention to, to really shaping that problem and understanding the real underlying problem that is there where process mining can help to uh, um, answer that question. Um, and maybe also to follow up, I think the type of case study that is presented here, we also have too few of these kind of case studies because now sometimes it happens, okay, look what we can do with process mining, we can create nice graphs, but doctors are interested in the real outcomes for the patient, like, okay, but how will this improve care for the patient? And these end-to-end -end case studies, not that many have been done in the sense that you, all the way starting from a real life problem, go all the way to the process mining analysis, but also that step further and also see, but what was the impact of this change in the process that was based on our process mining analyses that last step, it's just often not reported, and I think that is also a key step that needs to be done, even though from a timeline perspective it's not easy, but I think it's very important that that is done in order to show the added value that process mining can have in the healthcare uh, setting. So this kind of longer term case study research, I think is also a valuable area for, for future work. Um, thanks for your insightful presentation. I have a question. Um, have you considered, or could you uh, elaborate a little bit, to what extent this is used in clinical trials? Because listening at what you say, I think you need a controlled environment, you need high data quality, and there is a pretty high requirement in terms of proof of having an effective treatment that actually improves an existing treatment, is either faster or better in terms of patient outcome or cheaper, yeah? so it, it, you need to prove the benefit. So I could see a huge application field for clinical trials there. I agree with you, but I don't think it's explored already. So indeed, I think especially what we now see is often process mining papers focus on either more these supporting processes or more general patient flow oriented processes and less on the really hard clinical outcomes. But I see a lot of potential there, but I think that is the next step. I think we're currently still in the healthcare setting, in my opinion, more in the awareness creation uh, stage, like, okay, this is a technology that could be helpful for your organization these and these ways. And I think first that awareness creation step still needs to be completed, and then we can move to these kind of uh, controlled trial experiments where I think that process mining can play an important role but I don't expect that in the coming years. So maybe in, in five years or in 10 years, if we meet again, hopefully the answer will be completely different. But in, in my opinion, that's the ne next step that we need to, to take. Okay. Uh, I have a question about what I think is perhaps one of the more difficult parts of process mining in healthcare, and that is like comorbidities which is the case where you have multiple diseases at the same time, multiple guidelines which need to be then applied to the same patient at the same time. 
So I'm curious, have you already worked in that direction or, and what are the main difficulties you see in that regard when applying process mining? And I would very much be interested in both of your perspective on this. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, from my perspective, I don't know of much dedicated research on that topic, but the fact that comorbidities are there, that's indeed a big contributing factor to the fact there's so much variation in uh, these processes, because indeed, especially with the aging population, that problem will only get worse in uh, the future. Um, so what is currently often done is indeed to create some, some more specific patient cohorts, like to make the patient group more homogeneous, and for that particular patient group, look at the model. That's something you could do, but of course that's not ideal, so I think there's also a lot of research that still needs to be done on, on that matter. But basically that often comes down to controlling that big friability within healthcare. So that's a big underlying problem, and comorbidities are a big contributing factor um, there. So the current state of the art is, I think, more like okay, shaping patient cohorts, which are more or less homogeneous, and focus on them. Um, because if you throw all patients in one basket, they're just too diverse to end up with a comprehensible process model, or you have to aggregate so much. But then you can ask yourself the question, okay, how good of a representation is this re still uh, of reality? So that's, that's a trade-off that you need to make. And of course, if you aggregate enough, you will come up with something then you will also not be able to translate that into specific uh, actions for a specific group. If you, for example, have um, the focus on, on people suffering from kidney disease as a comorbidity, then you want to make, have actions that would help that group of patients. And of course, you aggregate so much, then you will also not be able to translate this in. And you can have a beautiful image, but then you will not be able to translate that into specific actions for that patient group. So, so it's definitely a, a challenge. And from our side, we have actually tried to form groups uh, taking in con into consideration that not all comorbidities um, have a relevant influence on the process. Um, besides comorbidities, there are some other factors with the patients that actually um, have a huge Im impact on, on, the, um, on, on the treatment process. Um, for example, just age. So if you... Yeah, uh, which is not a comorbidity, but absolutely re relevant. So if you look um, at, uh, at a knee replacement, for example, there's a huge difference in the treatment process for uh, a person being at the age of uh, maybe 80 years, slightly overweighted, um, than the treatment process of uh, someone being at the age between uh, 30 and 40 who has stupidly fallen off his uh, bike being back uh, on his way from uh, having too much beer on the reception dinner. So there are just so many different aspects working um, on these groups. Um, and you have to, of course, you have to form uh, a group um, that is uh, sort of uh, similar. They don't need to be the same, but similar in terms of uh, the care and treatment process. Everybody's starting to get hungry and thirsty, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks uh, for attending the session. Thanks for Niels and Niels again for this very insightful uh, view into process mining in healthcare. And uh, see you all at the dinner. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. <laughs>